All right, today we're gonna to dive into dollar cost averaging, how to do it, what are some of the best strategies to do it with, and how, really dive in deep on all this. I think you guys are gonna love this one. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back into Tech Path. We have this video asked among our audience, probably more so than any other video out there other than portfolio videos, and that is how to do dollar cost average, what's the process, what are the triggers, You know, all that kind of stuff flows into that. We're going to dive into that deep today. Before we get started though, make sure and hit the like button. Let us know you like these kind of videos because this is one of the key things that really helps us understand and how to put together our strategies for content to help our audience out there. And I want to jump into uh, dollar cost averaging. There's going to be a couple of different models that I use. There's actually, a, well there's many models, there's probably five or six. We're going to highlight three today that really kind of zone in on how you can go about it not necessarily financial advice. Remember, when we do all these kinds of videos, the idea here is to give you a bunch of research, maybe some data, and uh, really kind of get you moving in the right direction so it gets your education and your knowledge up on understanding how to invest in the crypto space, but not financial advice. Uh, so just remember that as you guys are getting out there. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, DCA bots. Now, there are... and you've probably seen many different types of advertisements and just so you understand the one we're going to present today is not a sponsor they don't support us we we're just showing them as an example uh but one of them and and i'll perfectly honest it's a product that i use so it's just you know there's ways i use it but you know, i'll explain all that but i want to get into um a company called pinex now pinex has a dca bot and this is kind of a breakdown of what they're doing um, and how to do it. There's really a trading bot uh, that is designed within the platform itself. Now, the first thing I want to explain about Pinex and how a DCA bot works is it's looking, essentially the bot itself is um, somewhat of an AI element. It's looking for the lowest opportunities in terms of percentages of change. Or in other words, if you see a 5% change, you can set your bot up to do uh, a buy any given point. So if we see an 8% drop, it does a buy if we if you wanted 8%. If you wanted to do it at a 10%, etc. And you could set this up also and automate it so that it's buying an X percentage of or a certain amount of uh, whatever the asset is. In this case, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin on all these given points. And mainly what it's looking at is historical data that's coming in, of course, from the charts. So it's a pretty effective tool to do kind of a set it and forget it. Now, what I will say is when you are looking at any kind of set it and forget it tools, um, first of all, I do not recommend that if you're active in crypto on a, at least a weekly basis. In other words, if you're watching, let's say two or three videos a week, on how to trade in crypto, what kind of projects to look at, all those kind of things. You're active enough to where you should maybe go to a manual and I'll explain how you can do that. But I wanna show you a couple of features here with Pinex. This is, of course, uh, their tweet right here. What indicator should we add to the DCA trading signals? Uh, and you can kind of see, they've got a lot of different ways in which it uh, can be done. So uh, different ways, Bollinger Bands, so that would be a good one. Uh, again, these are some technical trading elements. Remember, uh, Pionex is a Asian-based company. They do have certification in the United States. So as a U.S. user, you can actually sign up with them. So they are one of those that you can use. They're primarily and most notably known for their bot trading. And what I do and talk about with bot trading, while uh, we've tested it and we've used it here within the crypto pit and in the studio, but for an average trader, I just don't recommend it, mainly because of the tax implications. And what I mean by that is the number of trades that it uh, generates from an AI bot are so massive to be able to get those trades imported into your taxes are a little tough. So you have to really know what you're doing on um, the way in terms of reporting your trades when you're doing your taxes. So just for a good example, but from a dollar cost average side, that using it as a bot, different kind of story because that may be a scenario where you're only making 20 or 30 trades a year. Those are easily managed. They have a video out here. I'm going to mute that, but I'm going to show you a little bit about what they're, um, what they're doing here. And we'll just let it kind of flow through. So the, the app itself, first of all, is a pretty decent app on 
the overall, they use Tether as kind of their uh, primary trading pair anytime that you're doing any kind of activity. Obviously, it's driven off of uh, Binance. So you can see here going into standard mode, they move pretty fast on this so you can get your price settings in. Uh, and this, this is done through a manual or a DIY, do it yourself. Uh, so they're going in through the manual setting. And it looks like price scale right now is the percentage wise. And then you can set your, uh, your rebounds in here. And you can also take profit settings. So all of this can be tied in to the actual bot itself. Not a bad tool if you want to test it or make a run at using a bot as your dollar cost average tool. You know, you guys take a run at it. Um, personally, I don't necessarily use that model. Uh, but again, it's because I'm active in crypto on a daily basis. So I understand what's happening. I'm always following the charts and all of that makes sense to me. Hopefully, whether this is your first video to watch here on our channel, or maybe you follow us all the time. If you're following us all the time, then in my opinion, there's the manual method. And the manual method is you're following a lot of indicators. And in most cases, you're following news. Maybe you're following uh, the moving averages on, uh, you know, and we'll show you how to do that here on TradingView. And then maybe you're just following our sentiment data. So if you're like one of our CPI members and you're following sentiment, those are the two things that I follow, which is moving averages and sentiment. That tells me when I'm looking at a DCA opportunity. And I want to look at uh, a tool right, or, ju or just a, a story right here that kind of talks a little bit about it on where and why is this a good time to be looking at it. One of the key things that is happening with Bitcoin right now, as we all knew, is it's kind of humbling uh, right now if you've been invested in it for quite some time, but it is kind of uh, moving very lethargically around 30K, whether you've seen it all the way down to the 25 little dip that you got a chance to maybe get a shot at, or you've been hovering between the 27 and 31, 32 is kind of been where it has had. But price point, Bitcoin so far has avoided a steeper tumble uh, below the 30,000 level, but it's still poised to extend its losing streak. We still believe we're, that we're going to see Bitcoin below 30K consistently uh, and maybe hovering in the mid 20s. Market moves, uh, data from Bitcoin options, market show traders are leaning still bearish. Uh, again, these are indicators. When you guys are watching news or you're following our channel or others, you're looking for those bearish indicators because, again, it's kind of like by the blood uh, in the markets with reasonable understanding. And I, it's not just when the market goes red, go buy. You have to be able to understand some of the signals because there has to be a recovery signal that the particular asset can bounce off of because you don't want to be buying it on a, a free fall. Buying it on a slow decline, okay, that's reasonable if you're a long-term trader. Price point wise, they talk about this a lot. Uh, by one measure, cryptocurrency markets are going through their worst ever stretch and it's not over yet. So again, this is another indicator to me that potentially is a DCA opportunity. It's notable that uh, cryptocurrency's market cap has slowed uh, resilience around 30,000 price, which we know, but, it's, uh, but it sure hasn't staged much of a recovery since this last week of full blown all this again because of what has really kind of been indicated as the Luna aftermath if you know much about what's happening with Luna and UST, then everybody understands kind of why we haven't seen necessarily a bit of a, a recovery of Bitcoin. Granted, we're still seeing a lot of pressures from the traditional stock market that still leans in to where uh, the market itself goes. This is kind of a chart that goes into buying the dip and you know what you can do. And there's a couple of tools out there uh, and how it works. But this just showed a little bit about how buying the dip works over a long-term period of time, uh, and it does. This is something, and, and I'll show you this on some different charts and some different calculations in which you can go out and calc your own, calculate your own strategy on buying the dip and what that might look like, because right now is an opportunity. Even if Bitcoin does go down to, say, 25, even though I know some people believe we're going to see sub-20s, but even if we see that, the scenario of a bounce back is real. And the likelihood of getting in at these points again is pretty slim. So again, remember that Bitcoin works in cycles. A lot of crypto in itself works in cycles because of availability, Bitcoin being the leader. But also we're dealing with a lot of timing around the market right now. And that means inflation, uh, definitely a recession scenario coming into play, a global conflict in Ukraine. We have the stock market imploding and of course a structured 
soft landing that probably is not going to be soft at all. So those are some factors that you have to kind of play into this on an overall basis. So why dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin is the best strategy. This is something that you know people talk about um, all the time. And, and really, this is one of the key assets that I do dollar cost average with. Uh, Ethereum is the other. You know, and there's a handful of altcoins that I'm starting to do some things with on Solana, Avalanche, Cardano. Um, and these are different projects in which you, you trade completely different than Bitcoin. And even ETH to a certain set, if I look at my risk tolerance level, Bitcoin I would say is a 9 or a 10, meaning good. ETH I would still put somewhere between a 7 and maybe a 6.5. It's kind of a, a, still a risky asset because we don't know what the merge is going to look like and kind of the long-term effect. And then you get into the altcoins, which are a lot more risky but at the same time give you a lot of upside. So it depends on your risk tolerance as to it is uh, what is the, you know, the best way for you to go. One of the things they talk about here is the best average price um, and you know, kind of how to get to it because you know, the thing with dollar cost averaging is everybody always is, well, when's the best time to start? When's the best time? And I know some traders out there a lot of channels will say, don't worry about it, just always dollar cost average every week you buy and do this and just don't worry about the price. I'm not necessarily in that boat. Um, when I look at dollar cost averages, I do it, do, average opportunities, I do it during specific periods of time. And you don't get very many of those opportunities. So you have to understand how to uh, read them. And you know, this is a good example of a chart where where would you think, if you were looking at this chart right now, just talk to yourself there, uh, or to anyone you're watching the video with, where do you think you would try to jump in? Would you jump in, obviously, at the high? No. Would you, want to, would you have wanted to be in at the higher rates, or would you want to be in in the lowers? Of course, you're going to want to be in the lower rates. So what you have to identify is when those levels occur. Now, they can occur in different periods of time during a cycle. Example. If you were to dollar cost average last May when Bitcoin was falling, there was an opportunity there. And the same thing if you were dollar cost averaging in late summer before Bitcoin started its ascension to its all-time high. Those are the kind of scenarios that you are looking for. You're not always going to catch it on the bottom. So just be aware that that is not, and if you're trying to do that, just nobody ever does. So it's okay to miss it, whether it's high or low. Uh, the key is, is you're trying to create the average overall. Uh, and th this is kind of validated with a lot of veterans. Uh, crypto veterans extend a helping hand to bear market newbies. Hey, the best way to do this, of course, is dollar cost average. There's a lot of good advice in here on, you know, get into holding your own keys if you're not already doing that. Ignoring the market price to a certain extent. Get out of the garbage. Get rid of some leverage. If you're working on leverage right now, and you hear me say this all the time, get away from it. Work, I think, is really geared toward the whole aspect of working on your education side. And uh, the key here is stacking regularly. I do agree with that, but I do think that you have to do it in periods of time. And like right now is one of those times in which stacking regularly would be working. If Bitcoin goes to 45 in the next two months, would I be looking at dollar cost averaging in there? Under the conditions of the market, under the conditions of where we will be economic, economically, I don't think it's going to 45, but if it were, and we still had some of those kind of uh, economic conditions, that would not be a condition in which I would be doing dollar cost averaging. So uh, that's something. And then of course they go and talk about prepare for, prepare for a financial collapse. Um, and this is something that we've talked about often, and that is preparation for doomsday. And doomsday could mean a lot of things. It could mean double-digit recession or in inflation numbers, a, a full-on recession, jobless claims rising or skyrocketing here in the U.S. and continued uh, peril in the economic side of things. The key here is, is that you want to be in a position in which you can hold. So Never put more in any investment, and I don't do this, that you can't lose. And uh, I know people say, well, that's like, you know, of course I'm going to invest in, I anticipate that the, this is going to grow for me. All investments are a risk, including traditional real estate, you name it. We're, we're about to see what I think is going to be one of the biggest meltdowns 
in the history of economic conditions that we've seen maybe in the last 50 years. So understanding how to get into these assets at the right time, because that's when millionaires are made, is buying at those absolute lows. You may not be at the very, very bottom, but you might be at that slide into the bottom before a bounce starts to occur. So there's a lot of potential opportunity here. This is a good little uh, chart, uh, which is just go to DCA btc.com. It's just that simple. It's a website. And I put in a $1,000 amount every two weeks. And we're going to run this over three years. And essentially, this essentially will uh, calculate the amount of your investment versus what the potential uh, would have been. And this is looking back on a three-year runtime of what you would have had had you done this in uh, July of 2019. So this is the kind of, of potential gain that you could. Let's just drop that down to $100 every week. And we do the same thing for three years. Now it's a 15,007. Our total value is 43. So we almost 3X, 177% and change. This of course is on Bitcoin. So you can do this uh, and really kind of get into understanding where dollar cost averaging and what it might look like. So for you, from a standpoint of budgeting, uh, this is a great tool to use. Now, the other thing is, is people ask, well, how much should you put into a DCA plan? And that's, that's where it gets really muddy because everybody's finances are going to be different. But one thing I do is I look at my liquid reserves, meaning cash in the bank, and I look at an opportunity for what I would normally put into, say, a traditional risk asset. Let's just say stocks. And what I've been doing is I've been slowly feathering the amount that I put into traditional stocks into my crypto assets. And that's my DCA fund. So that's the idea of being able to do it. And I've been doing that with Ethereum. And the one thing you have to be cautious of with something like that is getting over uh, allocated, meaning your portfolio is too heavy on one asset and less on another. Uh, what you want to do is be as diversified as possible. Uh, so just be aware of that. Sometimes you can get these, these things on automated pilot and it creates you too deep into an asset than which you might want to be. So you just got to be aware of that. All right, so lots happening here. Um, time to set and forget. Smart crypto investors will be setting up DCA strategies now. This is really kind of what we're talking about today. And everybody's kind of uh, moving into this format. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, give you guys an example that there are a lot of people who have been in crypto for a very long time that use the strategy that we're talking about today. It is not something new and it's not something that is, you know, super exotic. It's really the nuts and bolts in football. It's the blocking and tackling of crypto and or any investment really because you could use this with traditional assets as well. All right, so I want to thank our sponsor today that is Celsius who has 1.7 million people who call Celsius their home for crypto. Join them to buy, swap, borrow, earn, send and store crypto all in one app with zero fees, the best rates and human customer service. Head over to celsius.network to get started today. Do remember that Celsius is not available in all places, so make sure to check out your own jurisdiction and you guys can figure that out. One thing I do like about Celsius, probably one of the best features I like, is their loan program. And borrowing starting at 0.1% APR is, I think, the best in the industry. And if you are looking at trying to take loans on crypto to be able to leverage up, this is one of those strategies and one of the products out there that I use on a day-in, day-out base. Full disclosure, big user of Celsius, and I love it throughout. Also, remember, if you guys want to use our link below, it helps the channel out. So check out Celsius.network. The other thing I want to get into is the chart, because this is going to be where we kind of break down. Now, what I've done here is a, a basic, even if you're using the free version of TradingView, when you're in your indicators here, and let me just kind of show you guys this. Uh, when you're in your indicators right here, let's go to the chart real quick. Yeah. All right. So you've got my indicators, there's a bunch of different ones, but I'm, right now I'm looking at the moving average and you can add the ribbon in if you want. But right now I'm just looking at the moving average and I'm using the 50 close, the 100 and the 200 close. You'll notice them up there in the top right. I don't know if I can zoom. You can't really zoom in on that, but um, let me see if I can give you a little bit better view. Yeah, there you go. So you can kind of see those highlighting right there in the top right. Okay. 
And what happens here and what I'm looking for is downward trends on these moving averages. Anytime I see downward trends, like what you see right here, so let me kind of draw this out for you guys a minute and we'll go to the ellipse. Uh, so you'll notice right here, this would have been a potential opportunity to do some DCA. I've got a downward trend right here again, opportunity on my, SM, on my moving averages. I'm moving down right there. I've got the same kind of scenario right here that's occurring. And I'm looking at this phase right here. There's one. And right here, I'm looking at where Bitcoin is on dollar cost averaging. So any of these points right here would have been great potentials and are great potentials to dollar cost average. We're trading at 30,000. Obviously, we saw some dips in here when we got down to 28.9 and we saw it even a little bit lower in the 27s. Sure, those are great. And that does nothing but help your overall average as you're continuing to build your and stacking your sats on Bitcoin. So that's just one of the tools I use. You can do this very simply by going into your indices on indicators, all right? And you just want to add your indicator. It's very simple to drop into those. You can go to moving averages. You, you can kind of see. It's very easy to get into these and, and being able to add those indices. Most of these are fully vetted, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Easy to, stu easy, easy to do. Uh, and it's, for the most part, free. This is one of the things you can, and it's one of the easiest things out there, which is the, the 50 close, the 100 close, and the 200 close moving averages. All you have to do is look at the points and make sure they're going down. Because so sometimes even when they're bottoming, we start to see upward trends when Bitcoin is starting to, still trending down, we'll start to see some upward trends. So you have to kind of follow those. The other one, of course, I use is our own CPI. Now, the thing that I look at on the CPI is a little bit different. I'm usually looking for these troughs. And what that simply means to me is that amplification has separated away from traditional sentiment. Now, sentiment right here is typically the top line price comparison. But the opportunity is right in here. These are the dates in which I would start to say, okay, here's some DCA opportunities. This would have been another one right here. DCA opportunities back on the 6th of May, 9th of May, and then 16th, 18th, and even the 20th of May. Now what's happening right now is amplification is starting to lift, which is why you're seeing Bitcoin hold over the 30K mark. So this is another tool. This one, of course, you can find over on our side if you're a member uh, to get into it. Most of the time we also talk about this, so just tune into the channel often. Hit the like button if you like these kinds of charts because this will help me understand we should show, show more of them. Even though we do show a lot of them and it's free, we try to put as much as we can on the channel. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to sign up, but if you want to get it at your, you know, at will at any time, sign up. It's pretty inexpensive to, to do that. Just go to the link below and you'll find all that good stuff. The other thing I follow is the fear and greed. Now, fear and greed is one of the tools that everybody talks about. But a lot of times people don't necessarily track it over time. And there are some cool things around it that you can look at on fear and greed. It goes into how it's measured, looks at vol uh, market volatility, the social, the dominant side. All these things are really good in understanding how crypto moves. And it's one thing that I explain often here on the channel is to really understand what you're doing by understanding the mechanisms that move it. So when you're investing in traditional stocks or real estate or things like that, you're researching the real estate market. You're researching the stock uh, quarterlies, whatever it might be. In crypto, it's a different angle. You have to look at the cycle of really kind of this whole Metcalfe's law effect, and that is the effect of crowds and how people are talking about it. Because a lot of times this is, in many cases, including even with Bitcoin to a certain extent, is a scenario where it is driven by the movement of crowds. And as those crowds move, projects get popular, they start to accelerate, then utility comes into play, if utility can be put into play, and then boom, you have a winner. Those are the kind of things that you should be on looking at all the time. This right here is another one within the fear and greed. Look at your historical. So I'm gonna go back here to the monthly. And you can kind of see it's up here. Uh, 24s, you know, still kind of hovering in the 20s, and then it just floored right here. And again, this is around, look at these, May. Back to when I look at these, 
floored. So again, that's another factor that you can kind of compare to right here. So flooring out, and then we're right here down as, as low as 10, which again, right now is a pretty good position. Let's go to the max just to show you guys how many times we've been this low. So we're out here at 10 right now. You could take a look right here. Back in August, we were at a five. This is in 2019. So that was when we had Bitcoin really on uh, a fall. But then you can look back over here in January, one of the most highest points, but that remember was not necessarily a all-time high. Your all-time high is hovering right here in November and October. Notice how those are fear and greed at 73 versus in January, we had fear and greed in the 90s, which was overly done. So again, you can't lean in on all of the indicators just by themselves. You have to utilize a combination of indicators to kind of get you guys moving in the right direction. Um, and then lastly, I want to get into a couple of things. This is kind of uh, an interesting, you know, analysis right here. Recently started uh, DCAing into Bitcoin once again, you know, seeing the crypto feed and greed. Uh, and they kind of show a little bit on where the percentage of changes were in comparison by the days and also as they looked at a historical. If you want to go into that level of, uh, you know, planning and really understanding, typically this is something for someone that is really diving in deep or you've got a lot of assets that you really want to kind of understand where to go. But that is one option as well. Uh, overlooked indicator. This is one that Benjamin Cowan talks about uh, a lot. And he's kind of mentioning uh, right here, and Cowan breaks down, it's called the 90-day uh, simple moving average. Again, this goes back to the SMA, just like what I was talking about. And what it does show is when the 90-day moving average is, say, below 30, as long as you have the right outlook, as long as you're not thinking it has to go up tomorrow, because if you find yourself in some type of situation, let's say 2018, you'd be a few months out. So he's simply saying, watch the 90-day uh, moving average, and he's doing kind of the same thing right here. As that moving average is below a certain amount, then it's a trigger for him to look at a DCA opportunity. Um, lowest level, this is just kind of confirming the whole point of, you know, it is low right now. Now, could it go down to the five like what we saw in 2019? It could, and if it does go into those kind of ranges, it means that Bitcoin is probably in the 20K range. And that is something that you have to be aware of and have to be comfortable with if you are DCAing in right now at 30K. So just look at those kind of scenarios and you'll, you'll be fine. Um, there are some things that I also want to show you here. I'm going to put a link to this. I may put it in the, in the thing, but I'll definitely put it into the Diamond Circle. So make sure and join our Diamond Circle because we'll, we'll share different kind of tools all the time within the Diamond Circle. Just click the link below. You can get in. It's free. We send out a couple of emails a week and we drop things in here. But this is a tool that I use that I created that essentially can go in. Let me kind of zoom in on that just a little bit. And uh, there we go. Um, so it's just a little DCA calculator. Uh, the advantage with this using it off, off a platform is that you can cross platforms here. In other words, you want all of your platforms and all of your tokens centralized in one place. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you're a Gemini user and a Crypto.com user because you don't want to put everything in one place, which is smart. Um, the problem is, is that your average over here in Crypto.com and your average over here in Gemini are two different averages. So what you want to do is use a tool like this. You can put a note in here for like which particular um, platform you bought it on. So if you wanted to add a, a column over here and just said, hey, let's, let's put platform over here and I'll, I'll know that's where I purchased it. But always set your purchase date in, what your quantity was. You know, so there's half a Bitcoin. There's your uh, unit price at the time, your total cost. And you do that on every trade for Bitcoin. And then this is a built-in tool that already grabs your certain number of tokens. This gives you 10 trades. It gives you your total cost of where you are so far. And then what your average cost is. Now you can change this formula very simply uh, by just going right there to the top and setting in the number of trades you've done. In this particular case, I've done three trades. So you can make that six trades or seven trades, depending on where you are on your trade list. Uh, and you can take this format 
and just duplicate. You don't have to be a spreadsheet wizard. Just duplicate this, make a copy right here. Very simple. Duplicate this right here and then change this over to Solana instead and just change up your numbers, okay? Keep your formats the same, all your formulas. But if I go back here to my Bitcoin chart and I want to buy and I want to take a look and say, okay, I know my, my cost of fees are going to be 400 bucks on a 1% fee ratio and my sell price is $33,000. My current deal that I've done with this little sample is I'm going to make seven grand on this dollar cost average model. And that is buying at 28, 26, and 29 at different points. And you can set your dates, all that good stuff. So it gives you an ongoing running. And that means you're combining Gemini, you're putting crypto.com, Coinbase. You're bringing all your assets into one place when it's all Bitcoin. Maybe it's over on Celsius and you're earning interest and stuff like that. But it's a good way to centralize on your dollar cost averaging. That's one of the biggest tricks I think that a lot of people lose sight of is they don't remember what their average is because they have to go out around and work out through so many different places. Now, if you have, even if you only have $10,000 or even if you only have $5,000 in an, in an asset, one thing I, I always recommend is to spread that out just a little bit because you never know about what's going to happen to an exchange. Just like you never know with banks, you know, the same kind of scenario. Issues can occur. So, Diverse, diversity in your uh, platforms as well as your assets is a very critical, critical move. I'll make sure and leave a copy of this spreadsheet link. I'll share it to anybody that's got the link. So you'll be able to get to it if you're in the diamond circle. We'll put it up a nice little, you know, uh, link to it, show you the dollar cost averaging, put some links in the video and all that good stuff. So you guys will have that. Uh, we may be able to actually put it in the, the link in the video's uh, description as well. So if you find it in there, good. If not, check the um, the, the diamond circle because it'll be there as well. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up for the day. Make sure, of course, if you're listening in on the podcast, jump over here to the YouTube channel. It's the best place to catch all this good stuff. And we always love to get your feedback. So make sure you leave some comments below and like this video right now. It's the number one thing you can do. If you're not subscribed to the channel, here's the time where you should do it. And of course, join us on all of our live streams and we'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.